Hey everybody, here with another example problem to sharpen your skills. So in this case, we got this brass strip here and we're asked to calculate a decrease in temperature for which slipping will impend. That's a fancy word, but when will uh, slipping occur at how much of a decrease in temperature from the current temperature? And uh, the key here is that we got this block here with a weight and it's causing friction. So while the strip wants to shrink with a decrease in temperature and it wants to slip to the left, we got the block here, which is causing friction, which will oppose it in the direction to the right. So as you probably guessed, we're gonna start by drawing a free body diagram just to get a sense of what's going on with this strip, okay? So let's draw the strip. Um, in fact, we're just gonna draw kind of half of it, the right half, with the weight up here on the right side. And uh, I'll just draw exactly where we're gonna make this cut here in the middle. So you can think of that as the left side here of the free body diagram. And we're cutting it because we wanna see the force that's going uh, inside of the member. So next we're gonna draw out all of our forces acting on this, this free body diagram. So we got the weight, 100 kilograms from the top, which will be opposed by a normal force from the bottom. And then whenever you have this normal force, we're given the, the coefficient of friction. So that's a hint, we got friction, and the friction is gonna oppose the, the force P. So the friction will be mu N, and it will oppose the internal force P in the strip. And we'll, we'll get more to that later. But first, let's just figure out what we can learn from this free body diagram. So the sum of all the forces in the Y direction equals to zero which just tells us that the normal force is equal to W. Could have guessed as much. Next, we got the sum of all the forces in the X direction equal to zero, which tells you that P is equal to mu N, which we also know is equal to mu W, because we just figured out that W equals N. And this next, uh, this next step here is probably the key to the whole problem. Okay, so key equation. So uh, we, we basically need to equate the change in length due to, on the one side we have the change in length due to the temperature. This strip wants to shrink. But on the other side, we know that if we have an internal force in a member, we have a, a change in length just from regular um, axial force. Okay, so we know that is equal to PL over AE but then we have the, the change in length due to the temperature as well. So we'll just write it out. Change in length equals negative PL over EA plus, uh, in this case, L times the coefficient of thermal expansion times the change in temperature. Now this L equals to zero. The way I've written it here, it's assuming a positive change in temperature. And if we have a negative change in temperature, which the question is asking about, it just flips all the signs. So we can rewrite that. We can put the PL over AE onto the other side of the equation. We can isolate for a delta T, and we find that delta T is equal to mu mg over EA times our coefficient of thermal expansion. So this is really the key to the, to the problem. If you figured that out, you're most of the way there. And what we gotta do remaining is simply gather all of our variables and plug them into the equation. We'll grab the coefficient of friction. It's given right in the question. The mass is given in the figure. We, we know G, just gravity. And then E alpha for the brass strip. They're given up here on the upper left side. Those are, are um, properties of the material itself. So you can look that up for brass in any kind of table. And um, finally, the area is just the 20 millimeters in the figure multiplied by the three millimeter thickness, gives you 60 millimeters squared. So all that's left, we just gotta plug it in, okay? So delta T is equal to, I'll just fill everything out quick time for you guys here. Uh, it's good to keep the units in, and um, me personally, I li like to always use MPA and uh, Newtons, because MPA, Newtons, and millimeters squared, because they just play nice with each other. In this case, we also have the coefficient of thermal expansion with the units of per degree Celsius. So final answer, plugging it all in, we got a delta T is 4.67 degrees Celsius, 
So that's the negative temperature change. So if that's what you got, good work. And I can't stress it enough. Keep doing example problems and don't look at the answer until you've given it a shot. Okay, you're ruining your own learning experience if you short circuit and you just and you just watch the solution. Please try it out, grab your pencil and paper or whatever you got going on. That's the best way to learn. Okay, peace.